Okay guys, so today we're gonna do a very cool problem. I learned a new technique with this problem. I hope you guys learn it as well. Join the Facebook group to discuss the problems. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the problem and the, the solution. So here we go. Second minimal node in a binary tree. Given a non-empty special binary tree consisting of nodes with the non-negative value, where each node in the, this tree has exactly two or zero subnodes. So this is kind, I think someone, the person who wrote this may not speak right English so well, but what he's trying to say is that we have a tree, all those, those trees have positive values, and each node has two or zero nodes that are children of themselves. So if the node has two subnodes, then this node's values is the smaller value among its two subnodes. Given such a binary tree, you need to output the second minimum value in the set made all of those nodes. So here we have two examples. In this example, the second minimum is 5. Why 5? Because 2 was is the minimum already, right? Because the, the root is 2. What about this? Well, we have three 2s and they're all the same value. So we have just one minimum. So we return what minus 1 in this scenario. So before we get started with the actual code, I want to give you guys the intuition behind this problem. For sure, we are 100% sure that the first value will be the minimum. Why? Because he said so. He said ever children of a, of a node in this special binary tree has values that are greater than that node. So 5, for example, it has 5 and 7. So it's either equal or greater than the root. So everything below 2 is is greater than 2. So we know for a fact that root is the minimum. Now what we want is to find the mini the second minimum value. So the minimum value from all the other nodes available. What I thought might be a good idea and I think it might work actually. I have an, I, I started solving this problem with this idea, but I didn't get it working. But I think if you have a little bit of persistence, you might get it right. Is putting all those values in an array. So for example, two, five, five, seven, and then you calculate the minimum, the minimum of that value that is not the minimum already. Uh, the problem might have to be with efficiency, so I ask the better, more experienced programmers to leave in the comments if that's the case, because you would have, in this case, to traverse the whole tree and then traverse the array to find the minimum. So you would add more time to looking for the result. Or we could do this calculation as we're traversing the tree, and that's all we're gonna do here. I already put the code because this is kind of complex and if I were to write it down it might be take too long to do the video so I'm going to show you guys the code and from the code we're going to go we're going to go to uh, a diagram that better explains what the code is about. So first I would like to comment on this really cool trick. Uh, I was kind of scared about this because I've never seen it before but what he's doing is creating an array with the maximum available value in the computer for any number so it's like one gazillions and billions and billions uh, why is he doing that because he wants to find values that are smaller than that uh, because what we want is to, we could initialize to a random value, so for example, zero. But then we wouldn't, we might have a, a, a 
uh, a number in the tree that is below that or greater than that. We actually know we can't have a value smaller than that because he said it's all positive. But you set a value to the greatest possible available number. So when you do a comparison, you know there is nothing greater than that. That's the absolute maximum. So this is a cool trick when you're doing comparisons. Because we're, uh, take a quick look. We're going to go through each of the steps, but just look at this if statement. We are looking for a value which is greater than the root, which is greater than the root. So for, the, for that example, two. two and two are not a greater than the root, so we can't make them the answer. But also that are less than the minimum we had up to that point. So uh, in this case, when we're traversing the tree, let's suppose seven was, uh, let's suppose three was here. Or let's suppose we have, let's suppose we had a, a minimum value, and then as we're traversing, there is a, a, a value smaller than that. So making this uh, res as large as possible will make sure we're never comparing with a greater value than that. I know it wasn't that clear, but uh, just just remember that it's a good idea to to get the maximum value in Java is integer dot max value when you're making comparisons. So he does a depth first depth first uh, traversal. If you don't know what a depth first traversal is, uh, we you might want to take a look, but in general it means going all the way to the left, then all the way to the right, and then going back to the root. So he goes, for each node, he goes all, as the name says, he goes all the depth down to the left. So if we if that node doesn't exist, we return the recursion, and if the value we are currently at the uh, the node we are currently at is greater than the root value, or is smaller than any previous second minimums we've had so far, we set res res which will be our answer to node dot val, and then we keep traversing both to the left, which will give us a depth first. And when you go all the way to the left of the recursion, you do the node dot right. And traverse dot root will initialize the traversal. So it's calling the function. And then we return minus one. And I like this notation here in Python. You can do a if else statement in just one line. So you say the, re the value that the if statement will return, the if statement else the value of else. So if res zero equals float inf, it means it, uh, uh, we haven't va found any value that is minimal. So probably we had a tree which has only values that are equal to the root or the, the, the tree is just uh, one node. In that case, we won't find a minimum value, so minimum value will still be the one we initialized, and we return minus one. Otherwise, we will return res zero. Uh, so I think I, uh, yeah. So 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 now let's take a look at a diagram. So in this case, for example. Uh, will fall into this category here because we don't have a second mean. Res zero will still be float inf and will return minus one. What about this one? Same thing. We'll go call traverse node the left, traverse node the right. Those values will still be equal to the root, so they won't f fall into this category. Res zero won't be updated, so res zero will still be float inf, and we return minus one. How about here? So here you have two. You call the left and right nodes. These won't be updated as res because it's equal to the root. This will be updated because 
It's greater than 2, but it's smaller than the large value we set at the beginning. 5 is equal to this, so we won't update. And 7 is greater than res 0 at the moment, which is 5. So we won't update it. So the answer is 5. Really cool problem. Uh, we, we practice depth first. We practice recursion. Also, this idea of having an array and updating that array uh, as we're traversing down the tree. And also this connotation of if and else statement where you can do everything in a line. Just remember that the return of if is before the statement and the return of else is after the statement. And you don't need the semicolon, I mean column to after that, after the if else keywords. So I hope you guys enjoy it. This is a really cool problem. I hope you guys practice these problems by yourselves. So see you guys.